Welcome to Redbeard and the Den of Tools. Howdy ho guys and gals, it's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear. And today, we're here to talk about washing machines. Yep, in fact, the Samsung VRT front loading is the one we're here to chat about. This is ours. I bought it for the wife as a housewarming gift back in 2012. Yeah, I know, before any of you chime in down below, oh, you shouldn't have bought that, or blah, 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 blah. You know, let's roll the clock back. At that time, you know, Samsung was really killing it with a lot of the appliances, with the refrigerators and such. And these were a fairly new item, and there wasn't the history that we have on it now, knowing that they're not quite up to snuff. And the, also add in the fact that I've got a wife who can, you know, operate an MP5, you know, <laughs> fairly efficiently. So, you know, you don't argue with a woman like that, if you know what I mean. But anyway, so this is what she wanted and, you know, happy wife, happy life. So that's what the bear got for her. And uh, other than a door latch issue that was repaired under warranty, it's worked fairly well for us, which considering how hard the water was in that area, the fact we got three small kids, the amount of laundry going through that machine, uh, it did pretty well. That is up until a couple weeks ago. And that's when we noticed that the drum inside was not spinning as freely as it should. While I jumped on the communities tab here on the, the YouTubes, uh, for those of you who don't know, if you click on uh, right below the video down there where it says Redbeard in the Den of Tools, it'll take you to the main page for the channel. There's a bunch of tabs there under that the header image. And one of those is community. And in that tab, it's kind of like Facebook for YouTube. And I post a bunch of pics and I talk with you guys about this and that. It's a great way to have a little bit more back and forth besides just videos. You know, there's a lot of topics that I, I like to chat on that just don't quite, you know, measure up to a whole video. So be sure to check over there every once in a while and see what's going on. Anyway, I talked to some of you about some of the things to look at, what could be, you know, causing issues and stuff with this. I also jumped on Google and found out that, unfortunately, this is a really common problem for these machines. And that is specifically the spider arm. Now, this is a, I know, it's a weird name and all, but what this does is this holds at those three outside points, it holds that inner tub uh, through a set of bearings and, and you got your gear on the back there and that's what spins using the motor on the back of the tub. And this thing has a tendency to essentially just dissolve in water. It's ridiculous. Now I'm sure there's some of you who are thinking, well, that's great. And I'm sure you do a lot of DIY stuff, Bear, and this is easy for you and whatnot. I'll have you know, I've never been inside one of these washing machines. I've never done a repair like this, but I looked at it and I figured, you know what? How complicated can it be? And in some ways it can seem pretty complicated, but in others, it's just a sheet metal box with a tub in it. Yeah, it's not the best drawing here, but I mean, really that's what it is. You got a bunch of sheet metal that create a frame for it. And inside you've got this tub. It sits on four shock absorbers and then it has two springs that hold it up. So, I mean, that's, and then it just spins around and around and around on the inside. And that's all it does. There's a bunch of electronics and tubes and stuff all over the place. But don't get frazzled about it. Honestly, I'm a firm believer. In fact, I'd say our whole family is a firm believer of, you know, you could probably do it if you just, you know, put your mind to it. A lot of these things are a lot simpler than you think, especially when you break it down to component tasks. So anyway, if you've got this problem, you're going to want to jump into this, this fix. You're going to need to order yourself a spider arm. You're going to need to order a replacement tub seal. And you're probably going to want to order six of these uh, bolts for the spider arm. Trust me, none of these bolts seem to live through getting uh, removed. They're, they're, I think they're made out of the same kind of cheap pot uh, metal material that spider arm is made out of. And the tub seal has a tendency to become sacrificial when you crack that tub open, or at least the tub casement. It, there's two parts. So altogether, these parts came out to about $120 with shipping off eBay. And uh, better yet, you know, better than me talking about it, let me show you what we did. Okay, we've got a Samsung VRT steam washer. And the problem is that I'm knocking everything over. That's the problem. I already take the back door of this off. But I wanted to show you what the issue is that we're dealing with. The tub inside. I don't know if you can hear that. 
does not spin freely. So something's rubbing, something's caught. We've already gone around and checked the gasket all the way around to see if there's anything caught. There's nothing in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this baby apart and see what's caught in there. It could very well be the, um, what do they call it, the spider arm thing or whatever on the back. The, the bearing may have gone in it or something, but we'll see what happens. There we go. A little spit elbow grease. Take a look at the inside of this thing. All sorts of lovely stuff going on here. Now the reason we had to take that off is we have to get to these bolts or nuts or whatever screws up here. Okay, so we're going to grab these. Something's not wanting to give up the ghost here. Those are all unplugged. I had to remove the bolt. There was one bolt that was holding this to the frame right there. One screw, sorry, I keep calling screws and bolts. Anyway, so I could pull that out just a little bit and that released enough tension in this part here to get this piece out because it comes up over this lip and this had to lift up so it just wasn't going to happen like that. Now you could disconnect these but I don't think where I'm going I need that much access so now we're just going to take these bolts right here off. So now we come down here let's turn on the light. Turn the light on there's a screw down there. Mm -hmm. You want to get it? Yeah. Make the missus do some work. Whatever. Her and her keep. Except for all the laundry I do. You got the Labrador dog is su supervising. How you doing? Great. Hey, hold on. All right, those are all out. Yep, the screw just fell down here though. Oh, great, we'll get that later. Leave that disconnected for now. And we just need to take the door latch assembly apart. Remember, it's important to always throw all your screws on the floor. That way you can get them all mixed up and you have to find play. Where does this screw go later? That's all the real professionals do it. So we just had to pry this little bugger out, and I wish I could have showed it to you, but it was too much of a pain. Oh, no. Anyway, there's other videos out there showing you how you pull it out, but you just get your, your little screwdriver in there and pry it out, and that's what holds this whole seal in here. We go in here, and we pull that off all the way around. Now that gets us loose from the front panel. The other thing we have to do is, oh, this is nice. They've upgraded this. It used to be something you have to use pliers on. There we go. Now you just push this whole thing into the drum. Well, we'll do that in a minute here. Okay. 
So to give you a proper idea on the issue we're seeing, as you see, that doesn't spin freely. So we're going to take these weights off and try to get into the drum assembly itself. This will be fun. So we've got in here behind this we've got those hangers right there I've disconnected this from right here it goes to that this was the weights weights and we've disconnected the shocks on both sides I disconnected this tube from right here so this thing will need to let go. Doesn't look like it's. Yeah, it is. It's connected down here. We'll see whether it's probably easier to disconnect it right here. Okay. So it looks like we need got some wires on the bottom to disconnect. So we get some wires right here to disconnect. Okay, on these wires down here, you just pull the red tab and the blue tab, but they go through that semicircle box there at the bottom and they're zip tied into it. It's a real pain to get out of there. But on either side of this little column, there's two little tabs in there that you can pop out. You need a screwdriver to get in there and to press and pull them out. And then that whole piece just comes right out as one unit. You will have to unscrew the ground wire there in the center. And then other than that, then we just get the stuff on the back. Okay, we're here on the back side now. Unfortunately, this whole back panel doesn't come off. They give you these little access ports here and here on each side to get through to the bolts that you're going to need to take off. It's not the easiest solution, but it's what we got. So we're gonna get started on it. Okay, and these are the points where the computer connects to the wash drum. It's real simple here, just uh, unscrew all of these points, remove those Molex connectors. Okay, I don't know those are technically Molex connectors, but 
that's what they I'm calling them. Uh, and I recommend a magnetic dish here for collecting all those screws. Here's those two wires I disconnected earlier that I said, oh, I won't need to disconnect those. <laughs> Needless to say, we did. And there's the front panel. As you can see, we've removed it. And back inside the uh, washing machine here, these are the spring mounting points. Now, I don't know if you can tell here, there's a little plastic tab there that secures it once it goes inside that grommet. Just get a, maybe your fingernail or a screwdriver for those of us who don't have fingernails and uh, just snap that out and then you can lift the spring up and out of that bracket. Uh, I'd recommend maybe getting somebody to help you. Uh, you can do it by yourself. I did, uh, but it's the, the tub is really heavy and uh, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to be thankful if you have somebody who can help lift the weight there. And then just go around and remove the rest of the hose connections that are connecting to the tub. That's the handle there for lifting it. And there we go with a little editing magic. We've uh, got the whole tub out of the machine. Um, the extension cord there I was using as a, a makeshift rope. I couldn't find my rope. My rope disappeared. I think the kids were playing with it. And I was using that to wrap around the handle there to help me lift it out. It's really ungainly to try and get that out of there. And the next step after that is just to go around and remove the screws from each one of those holes there. Make sure you collect them, set them aside. Then once you have all those screws out, just take your trusty screwdriver, wedge it in there, and crack that puppy open. It's that simple. Now the front of it comes off fairly easy. All the weight is on the back. So you should just be able to lift that right off and set that off to the side. Careful of that heating element. I don't know if you can see it's just off screen to the, the top there. But there is a beat, <laughs> beat. There, there is a built-in heating element. Uh, it doesn't heat the water exclusively. You still need to have hot water access. But it boosts it when you're using the, uh, oh, the sanitization uh, settings. And there's what you'll have at this point. And that's the inside wash drum, the back of the tub. Now the tub is what keeps the water in the washing area. The drum is what holds your clothes and agitates and everything. Uh, so the next step then is gonna be going around the back and uh, removing the, the back end of the wash tub. Okay, here we are around the back. I'm removing the bolt here from the uh, stator housing. The uh, I'd already loosened this up uh, with a uh, with a wrench. The you stick a screwdriver in one of the three holes that surround it to lock it in place, uh, and then you just uh, take it off here. <laughs> as simple and easy as as I'm making it look. Okay, then just grab the housing on either side and try to pull straight back. Uh, the magnets there are gonna wanna keep it in place. You don't wanna let it slam to one side or the other. You see, I got my knees up against the tub there. We it straight back and then just pop it right off. The magnets are lining the inside of that housing and then there are copper coils on the stator housing itself. Okay, this next part's pretty easy. You just go around and remove every single bolt here uh, on the uh, the base plate there and then you're also going to remove the I believe it's six bolts on the stator uh, itself and uh, just make sure you set those aside uh, again try to you know uh, I have a, a system that I use on a little side table where I use a different magnetic dish for each set so that I don't get them confused Okay, and the key thing here is once you get that last bolt off, <laughs> don't, don't leave it dangling. Uh, that thing's really delicate and it's, <laughs> I almost dropped it, and really brittle. And that's going to be an expensive part to replace and you don't want to have to do that. Okay, and just to be clear, you don't actually need to remove this base plate here. Um... In fact, I'm not even sure you need to remove the stator itself. It's probably best to do just to get it out of the way so you don't damage it. But 
if you're just replacing the spider arm, uh, you don't need to remove any of these, I don't think. Now, I was doing this because at this point, I didn't know I was just removing the spider arm. You know, at this point, it's still a diagnostic situation, I'm trying to figure out what's gone wrong, what's causing the problem. So basically, and, and that also may be an excuse for me just wanting to tear the sucker apart and see how it works, because that's the kind of bear I am. But um, again, if you know it's the spider arm or you strongly suspect it, I think you could probably skip these steps. Uh, as long as you remove the stator housing itself and you free up uh, that, uh, that gear pin in the center, uh, from there, uh, you're pretty much set. And from here, it is simply a case of gently picking it up. Uh, be careful, it will want to spin on you sitting it on its front side and then grabbing the rear tub assembly and lifting it off the wash drum. So this, I think was down here grinding against this. Now give you an idea what that is. Yeah, I'm guessing this came out of here somewhere. There we go. There we go. Out of right there. Now here's the thing. Look how corroded this is. And look how uncorroded that piece is. That piece sheared off a long time ago. And has been sitting in here. This thing's, they weren't kidding when they said these things are junk. Almost every one of these bits, or every one of these bolts, the head's just clean snapped off on. It's, it's almost like why bother? I think I got one, one out hole. So now, it's time to see if we can get this thing out of here. Managed to pry it up to this point. See if I can lift the whole thing out. <laughs> or not. That's awesome. Some pieces. That's beautiful. So I'm going to take this out and pressure wash it and clean it before putting that back in my washing machine. And we're going to have to order a whole new one of those. Ugh. Okay, here we are. Everything's been put back together. I know I cheated. Uh, I didn't show you putting it back together. But if you like that, if you want to see that, just play the video in reverse because it's exactly the same thing. You see it turns on. It's going into wash mode. It's thinking about it. Hey Labrador, come here. Come on. Lab saying hi. The Labrador. Anyway, it really is dead simple putting it back together. As long as you've documented along the way what you did, you know, I recommend taking pictures of every step and uh, then uh, and making sure you isolate or you, you sort all your screws and such. And there she goes. We got water flowing, drums spinning. Okay, I admit I'm cheated. We've actually run several loads of laundry to make sure it all works and everything. But it's good. All fixed, ready to run, and uh, clean clothes. All right, well, there you have it. As you see, you know, it's up, it's running, it's working. The wife is thrilled, thinks the bear's a hero here. And, you know, it just took, you know, a little bit of sweat and tears. A few nicks, you know, a lot of guys will recommend wearing gloves when dealing with this because, you know, the sheet metal on a lot of these things is pretty bad. 
I have worked in a lot of computer cases where the sheet metal is just the Slice and Dice 2000, but uh, this wasn't horrible. They rounded most of the corners. It wasn't terrible. I got a few nicks, but it's not something I really pay attention to. Um, you know, I didn't need stitches for anything, so <laughs> it's all right. One thing I did do, though, was... I, once I got everything out, I actually took an extra step and I removed all those electronics on the bottom and I took it out back and I pressure washed the inside of the, uh, the, uh, the box there. You know, after six years in a laundry room, a lot of gunk and stuff had uh, come up through the bottom. There's a big, you know, hole in the bottom of this thing for some reason. And it was just kind of nasty in there. And I figured, well, I got it down that far. I might as well take it down the rest of the way. That's something I recommend doing. Now, one thing that is often recommended with these is that you also replace that front uh, tub gasket. That's a piece that looks uh, something like that. Now, I thought about doing that, but it's an additional $60 or so to uh, buy that and have it shipped. And I looked at the gasket that was in there. I gave it a thorough going over and it seemed still very pliable, had good shape. I didn't see any cracking or tears in it. And, you know, you have to, you have to consider you know, what is going to be the full lifespan of this tub? And if you think about it, that spider arm's only going to last, what, another six years? You know, so you need to think about it. You know, are you going to be paying $120 every six years plus, you know, 50 bucks for a tub seal every 10 years and, and whatnot? Or are you just going to buy a new tub? Honestly, I think the next time it comes around, we're going to buy a simple, basic, top-loading, no-frills washing machine. You know, we had one before, and honestly, after talking to the wife, there, there, we, we got no additional use out of this thing. Did, did it clean? I don't know. It maybe it cleaned a little bit better. It It's hard to say. I mean, it sure is shiny and pretty. But other than that, you know, are you really getting your money's worth out of it? And I, I don't think so. I was happy to be able to buy it for the wife. You know, it made her happy. And, and that's, that's all I care about. I got clean clothes and a happy wife. But at this point, you know, I think the, uh, the luster has worn off. So in the future, we're going to be going with, with more basic kind of stuff. I uh, have to see if maybe I can build one of these with an Arduino or something to run it. Something simple, cement mixer style or something. Anyway, <laughs> if you got any questions about this uh, repair, you know, post it down below. Trust me, if the bear could do this, you can do this. You know, there's no... There's no reason not to give it a try, honestly. Anyway, <laughs> take care, everyone. And as always, shine on. Thanks for watching the video. If you'd like to help support the channel, the easiest way is our one, two, three method. First, chomp that like button, give us a thumbs up, spread the word with a share, and subscribe and ring the bell. Remember, if you don't ring the bell, YouTube doesn't really believe that you want to watch the videos. But maybe you'd like to take it a step further. Maybe you want to go over to Patreon and consider subscribing to the channel for only a dollar a month. You can become a Black Bear member and help support the Den of Tools. Also, YouTube now allows us to sell merch directly on each video. Yeah, if you scroll down below the video, right where you see the description right below that, you should start seeing a little pop-up window that shows you some of the Den of Tools merch. Or pick up a copy of the Home Distiller's Workbook, your guide to making moonshine, whiskey, vodka, rum, and so much more. And we still have the DeBear shirts available. Links to those items, as always, are in the description below.